Brains! Brains! I need computer brains! Wah, ah, 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 ah. Yeah, don't mind my humor. <laughs> don't mind my humor. I'm in... I'm at that time of the day for a geek when you've replaced something like nine hard drives and MacBook Pros, and you've got a few more to go. Uh, so these are my MacBook Pro uh, lab computers that I've talked about. I got these off of back market. And one of the things that I've been uh, discussing is one of the why I decided to go with the MacBook Pro 2012 versions. And uh, some people don't seem to grasp why this is, but these are actually uh, good computers. These aren't actually as good. These are actually 2011 MacBook Pros. But anyways, that's his own idiotic story. But why I like the uh, the MacBook Pro, the, the, the MacBook, uh, 2012 MacBook Pros, which are basically the same, is you have a built-in network card. Uh, so we're going to be doing uh, server classes. So we're going to do like Microsoft Server, uh, you know, uh, server clustering, Active Directory clustering, that type of thing. Uh, and so having the built-in network card is very useful. Uh, on top of that, these are actually pretty decent computers, right? So they've got a dual core, 2.5 gigahertz processor, an i5 processor, but that is good enough to run any server, to be clear, in a classroom environment. Would I use this in production? No, well, I don't know. You could probably use it with up to 10 users if you're doing Active Directory, honestly, but no, I probably wouldn't use it in production. But again, when it's in a classroom and there's one user... <laughs> It's more than good enough. So it gets 2.5 uh, gigahertz processor. You can put in up to 16 gigs of RAM in these. Uh, I've been using four gigs. So when I get these, they generally have four gigs in them. And four gigs is actually pretty decent. Again, if you're using VS Code for PHP and JavaScript and that kind of thing, it's, it's good. Uh, and then as I said before, since these are Intel machines, uh, I can install Mac OS onto it. I install Ubuntu. So our standard uh, build is actually using Ubuntu. Ubuntu works perfectly. So you can get the, the most modern version of Ubuntu desktop working on these, fine. So I can put Ubuntu on here, I can put VS Code on here, I can put the Arduino IDE on here. So again, all the things we need in a classroom environment we can put on here. And then obviously Windows. So you can put all the Windows servers. So you can put Windows, Windows 10. Uh, now with Windows 11, it requires that TPM module. Obviously we don't have TPM modules. Uh, I think there was a workaround. I haven't found that. I, I have installed, so I can install Windows 10 Enterprise on here, which is good enough for our classes. Uh, and uh, the server is what, 2019 server? Is there a 2021 server? Anyways, I installed, I think, 2019 server on this, and it's worked fine enough. Uh, so all that's good. Uh, but one of the things that I do with these is uh, when, we get the, um, when we get the MacBook Pros, uh, if they come with platter drives, really, if they come with platter drives, or even if they come with solid-state drives, um, you'll notice if you buy them, the most, you'll most likely get these Fang Ziang solid-state drives. Uh, these are garbage. Uh, this is a 250 gig drive uh, that costs 12 bucks on Amazon. <laughs> Twelve dollars on Amazon, so you know you kind of get what you pay for. Uh, so what I do is I go with these uh, these Sandisk drives. Uh, so these actually cost thirty bucks. So Sandisk is a good reputable manufacturer. Uh, you get the two hundred forty gig. Uh, you get a nice. They're the SSD pluses. You actually get these for thirty dollars a piece, uh, and it's pretty easy to uh, swap out the drives in these. Uh, so you take out the screws. Take out the screws, you get a little teeny screwdriver, and you take out the screws. So you don't need, the other nice part with this is you don't need Torx, you don't need the weird Apple screwdrivers to open it up. Basically, you pull it off, and then when you open it up, it looks like a good old-fashioned laptop, because that's basically what it is. So the RAM's here, if you want to swap out the RAM, uh, you got two sticks of RAM here, that's no big deal. Um, you know, battery, if you wanted to screw with that, you can do that. You can do a lot of repairs on these if you actually have the time and you want to care to. Uh, but the big thing for me is the drive. Um, so basically, there's some screws here, and then you can pop up this little thing. And then with this, you literally just pull it out. There's a little connector here. Dun, dun, dun. Not break it. Anyways, okay, so the connector comes out, and then you pull out the drive. Uh, you'll notice they have the little nibs, so I use pliers. These actually do require a special, like, Torx wrench or something. Um, I don't know where mine is, so I just use pliers, and I just yank them off. I basically unscrew them off, uh, put those onto the solid-state drive, plug the solid-state straight, straight drive in, 
close everything up, and uh, then reload whatever operating system that I need. Uh, so again, if you're interested in doing your own Silicon Dojo or computer labs or whatever else, um, this is why I really like uh, the 2012 MacBook Pros. Again, at this point, I've purchased 15 of these. Uh, so I purchased five uh, previously a couple of months ago. I've been using those in classes. So I've used those in two classes so far, plus the general work that I've done. They have worked wonderfully. Um, so that's why I I just ordered another 10 and I got these 10 so we'll have 15 um, and I'm really going with these because these these are good machines for educational lab environment it cost me about hundred and four somewhere between 140 to 150 dollars a piece you had a sand disk drive in that puts it up to uh, 170 to 180 that's it. Again, maybe if you need some RAM, but again, four gigs of RAM is fine for what most people do. The only reason I'm probably going to upgrade some of these is when we get into things like Hyper-V. When we do start doing like things like virtualization and stuff that just requires more resources, um, I might upgrade like five of these to like 16 gigs. But I have to tell you, even just four gigs of RAM, it's like you look at four gigs of RAM anymore and people laugh, oh, ha ha, my phone has like eight gigs of RAM. But again, <laughs> for a classroom lab environment, it's a, it's pretty pretty good enough. So, anyways, this is this has been my this has been my oh so exciting oh so passionate work for the day. And I figured I would just give you a little insight into what I'm doing because again, if you if you're even thinking about doing anything along the lines of Silicon Dojo. 2012 MacBook Pro. I know they're I know they're 10, 11 years old at this point, but by God, they they hit. They hit every metric that actually matters. That was kind of funny. I got uh, I got some snarky person on YouTube, and they were like, "Yeah, well, oh yeah, if you're using 2012 MacBook Pros, that just shows how 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 crappy your school is. You should be buying uh, M1 used M1 processor uh, MacBook Pros for like six or seven hundred dollars." And the funny part was, I was like, "But then I couldn't do what I need to do." But then I couldn't load Windows onto it. But then I couldn't load Linux, or at least a good version of Linux onto it. But then, but then it doesn't actually serve the purpose. It would cost a lot more money, and it would look cooler, but it wouldn't solve my problem. The 11-year-old computers that I can pick up for 140 bucks a piece, and they solve my problem. You know, that's, that's, what, that's why the kids call me a boomer, because I try to solve problems with tech. I know. I know. That's why I can never be a cool kid again, because because boomer boomer old me is trying to solve problems with tech. So, anyways, with that, see y'all later.